guys, it's Kayla and Jim and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. Today we are going to discuss the Greensburg, Kansas tornado, the EF5 tornado back in 2007. So we're going to do a little case study today. A little case study for you. Lots of good information, but before before we get started, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss another Meteorology Monday or case study or tornado talk with Jim and Kayla. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start getting into the Greensburg, Kansas tornado. So first of all, what was the setup that day? So the setup that day, SPC went ahead and issued a moderate convective outlook. It wasn't really a spectacular day, you know, it wasn't a high risk, it wasn't all hyped up, it wasn't like one of these big events like the outbreak of 2011. It's just a moderate risk. All right, we have 15% chance for tornadoes, which is a significant amount still, but I mean, it's not 45%. It was an okay day. So it was a moderate risk, so people get excited about that, especially in the meteorological community, but they certainly did not anticipate what was going to happen yeah. that day to that magnitude in terms of the strength and the number of tornadoes. I believe that was the beginning of an, uh, an outbreak, right? It was, it was the beginning of a, of a little two to three-ish day outbreak, yeah. So the setup was something's going to happen, but I think for Kansas it was kind of like a, yeah, seen this before. Nothing unusual. It was May 4th regular day. The so fourth was not with them this day. Oh boy. Or maybe it was. <laughs> All right. So there's the setup. Moderate risk for the day. When did things start really firing up for that area? So the interesting thing about Greensburg is that the supercell didn't start forming until 8 p.m. Which if you're familiar with how tornadoes and supercells form, they normally take place, you know, in the afternoon when you have all that daytime heating and all your setup is coming together. This one happened at night. One thing when you've got a storm system like that at night, although there may be warnings issued and, and storm chasers can go ahead and start congregating around those areas, it's starting to get dark out, especially when you got the storms blowing up and hiding the sun off to the west, it's going to be hard to chase at that point. Yeah, at this point, you, you can't really have a safe chasing environment when it starts to get this dark. As we start going along here in the progression of the day, you'll see that people only really knew that there was a tornado coming because when lightning struck, they could see it, but without the lightning, Okay, so here we've got the setup. Here, here it go. is, 8.45. Things start cranking up, storms start to fire. Yep. And then what happens after that? Around 9.20, we have a tornado spotted on the ground. And it's not just a funnel, it's like an entire wedge tornado, which means that the huge circulation from the wall cloud and the mesocyclone, you have a lot of that on the ground itself. And as we went on, the tornado ended up being 1.7 miles wide, which I mean, that that's- That's huge. Incredibly significant, huge. especially at 9.20, 9.40 at night. So here, I believe the tornado was off to the southwest of Greensburg. Greensburg. And as it's developing and it's starting to get towards town, it has grown into this massive wedge that is basically the size of the town, if not a little bit bigger. The small town of Greensburg, Kansas, at that time was only a mile and a half across. And you have a wow. 1.7 mile tornado coming out. <laughs> you have a tornado bigger than the entire town. And there was only about 14 or 1500 people living in Greensburg yeah. at the time. So it's not really a big footprint right. that the town has Very at this small point. Town. And this tornado is basically going to cover this whole footprint. That's incredible. Now we are at around 9 40 9 41 p.m at this time the national weather service goes ahead and issues a tornado emergency so this specific example you can give a tornado warning sometimes it's radar indicated even though it might not be on the ground but something could happen or there is something on the ground and it's heading your way but when it hits it's an imminent impact it's going to be devastating they elevate from warning to an emergency so they issue the tornado emergency before it reaches the town but they literally have got minutes minutes yeah. seconds to minutes to make decisions especially on the south and southwest side of town to take shelter or, or else that's it and and these are very strong winds at this point yes so the tornado ended up being how many miles per hour 205 miles an hour i mean if you think about that that is definitely a cat 5 hurricane most of the time a cat 5 hurricane that has gusts 
you know, the very strong hurricanes that you hear about gusting to 200 miles an hour, that's what this is, sustained 205. Granted, it's 1.7 miles across, not like a hurricane that's, you know, 100 miles, right. but still, it has the same devastating impact, and that's just incredible. And this thing is moving along at its pace, so it's going to take time to get from the front edge get hit in this point to the back edge hit in that point. Yeah. It's 1.7 miles, yeah. and it's moving along at a certain speed. It's going to take a few minutes minutes to yep. get through. And that brings us to our next little interesting fact. The tornado took about two to two and a half minutes to pass over one point. The people in Greensburg were saying that the first half of the tornado hit and then they were there for two, two and a half minutes before the tornado was completely gone. Yeah, and, and there was even a report of it seemed like the tornado was over so people were starting to come out yeah, of where they were hiding. Thing. And then the back end of it, very much like a hurricane, you know, with the, with the eye and it got quiet. Yeah. This was so big that the potential was there for an eye, so and to speak, yeah. you know, where the winds died down enough that people thought it was over when the reality yeah. was no, it wasn't over yet. So right. that was interesting. I mean, it definitely wasn't the clear sky, nothing happening, not even raining thing that hurricanes have, but I can't even imagine. No, no, and, and just if you imagine 200 mile an hour winds going through 200 mile an hour winds and everything is just getting destroyed and then you think it's over. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's back for the same duration of time, 200 mile an hour winds. Now you've got, I mean, most of your area has been destroyed. So what was protecting you before is not there. And now you've got to go through this again for that same amount of time. It's almost like getting hit by two tornadoes back to back. Yeah. Let's do a quick little experiment. Let's just take 10 seconds here and then imagine that 12 to 15 times longer having to go through this tornado. Here we go. That was 10 seconds. Felt like an eternity. And, and that's just sitting here. That's just sitting here. Imagine 200 mile an hour winds for 10 seconds, let alone it being much longer than that. So that supercell, that put down that massive tornado. Greensburg wasn't the only tornado associated with that supercell, right? It was right? not. There was four other tornadoes that were pretty significant happening right around Greensburg, also in the middle of the night. Incredible. Crazy strong storm system that night. So now you have this storm system and it's dropping these tornadoes all over the place in the same general area. If you're talking maybe county to two counties, mm -hmm. you know, right around Kiowa County yep. where they're seated. So it's uh, incredible, incredible. And I think when the storm system formed, was it actually like a, a two cellular structure that kind of split apart? It was. The original supercell for Greensburg was one big kind of storm and then it split in half because when you have your, your mesocyclone come down, then you have two storms that go like this. One kind of just went off to the north and kind of did its own thing, didn't put down a tornado, and then the other one went kind of northeast into Greensburg. Yeah, so the Greensburg tornado was the, was the further south part of that cell that when it split and they were hoping that it was going to right turn and miss Greensburg. Because the other it, one went way off in the other direction. Right. And then the last minute, it looked like it took a left jog and went right through downtown Greensburg. And the funny thing is, is that when you continue to follow the path, as it gets through town, it actually starts to move to the north and, and then eventually northwest and starts to actually hook around. It did! As it, it, it's starting to fall apart as it gets over on the west side of town, but it's, it's starting to... It did a whole little loop-de-loop -loop thing. <laughs> it, it was loop. coming right back around. It was coming back almost approaching from the west this time and at the end they were saying that there was only five percent of the buildings in all of Greensburg that did not have damage they said like 95 percent of the town had severe damage or the buildings were uninhabitable right I mean imagine your town going from 100 percent down to five percent inhabitable and you've got all this destruction and yeah. your main core of your town, your infrastructure, that's it's all gone. They said that the, the people who lived there couldn't even find their own streets because everything was gone. All of the landmarks were gone. The trees that were still half stuck in the ground had like straw embedded in them and all the bark was gone and there were no leaves or branches at all. I mean, we'll show some footage here in a little bit, but I, 
it looked like a nuclear bomb went off in the town. It was just everything was leveled. And so how it got the EF5 rating, well first of all, the enhanced Fujita scale actually was finalized earlier that year. Yes, it was. And was made available so that they can start rating. And this was the first EF5 since that scale was put in place. Nice. A lot of that rating was because, according to its definition, stick built homes, you know, framed homes, clearly wiped off their foundations, and trees would be debarked, etc., etc. You saw that everywhere. Everywhere. One other interesting fact was the green. Greensburg, Kansas tornado of 2007 was the first F5 slash EF5 rated storm since the Moore, Oklahoma tornado of May 3rd, 1999. That it was. So we did not have a storm that strong for that many years. And your other fun fact about that is that that is the second longest period of time between two EF5 tornadoes. And the number one place is currently our last EF5 in the United States was the May 20th, 2013 Moore, Oklahoma tornado. So, do you sense a common thread there? Be prepared, Greensburg. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we have the tornado that came through the night of May 4th. Most weather situations start the cleanup efforts as soon as you can. Yep. That night, obviously, it's going to be hard because you don't have street lights, you don't have your infrastructure. So, obviously, next day the sun comes up, and all right, let's get to cleanup operations, right? As well as recovery operations. Not for Greensburg! <laughs> because the very next day, those tornado sirens went off yet again. As you imagine. We had, I believe, eight tornadoes, again, go very close to Greensburg, with three of those tornadoes being within five miles of the town. <laughs> and then total for the day, there were 111 tornadoes across the central plains there. Wow, that's incredible. Could you imagine going through an EF5 and then the next day when you're trying to pick your life back up, hearing the sirens again? There's no shelters, there's no nothing. I yeah. mean, you can't get back in the shelters because... Right, there's nothing there. You got the emergency workers, you've got... Now you've got more people in the town. Yeah, you know, you've got the, the cleanup folks, you've got people, residents of the town trying to pick up what's left of their belongings, and now you've got these storms coming in again, and not just another rainstorm. No, a tornadoes. Huge tornado outbreak day. <laughs> you know, yeah. and the sirens are going off again. I wouldn't be handling that well. <laughs> they said so many people from Greensburg actually ended up moving back. They had about 50% move back within that first year and stay in Greensburg, I would have been 50% that left. <laughs> the really interesting thing about Greensburg is they started doing, I think they were the first community to do the green initiatives to the degree yep. that they did, where all city buildings had a certain standard and they made that optional for residents if they wanted to build that. You know, they were the first community to actually extend that far with the green initiatives. Yeah, they said a cool thing that, you know, wind destroyed the town and wind helped rebuild it because they put up all those wind turbines and use green energy like that. That's cool. <laughs> so there we have it. There is a little overview of the outbreak that happened on the 5th and a little bit into the 6th. And here are the storm reports from the 4th, 5th, and 6th that you can kind of see the spread of tornadoes that happened and the crazy number of tornadoes. Also, the Greensburg, Kansas one was the only EF5 of that whole thing there. And another interesting thing, you have a town that was completely leveled by an EF5 and yet there were only 11 deaths. Wow, which that's incredible. is a crazy awesome statistic for those who are working at the National Weather Service who are able to get the warnings out with like 20 minutes lead time and then issue a tornado emergency and really inform people of hey this is a really dangerous situation everybody needs to be in their storm shelters and and this thing is really coming at us they did a fantastic job that day and yeah. saved so many lives the emergency workers were saying they were expecting hundreds of deaths that day and yeah. there were only 11 and not only did the National Weather Service get the warning out. You had other emergency management personnel and the Kiowa County Sheriff's Department and, and everybody just working together to inform the town and get people yeah, where they need to go. Neighbors were helping neighbors, getting them informed and helping them get to places. They had tornado shelters as well so that they could get to. Everyone worked together to really reduce the amount of deaths. Now that we have gone through all of the statistics and the fun facts, let's show you some footage from Greensburg, Kansas, May 4th, 2007.
News stations track the tornado live as it travels north along Highway 183. There you go, there's some footage and some pictures of the damage afterwards. If you want to take a look at any more information about this storm, Storm Prediction Center has got a whole lot of stuff out there. Yep, you that's... can look in the archives and look at all the fun stuff from that day. That's right, that's right. And there's plenty of videos on YouTube to look at the Greensburg, Kansas uh, tornado, as well as Weather Channel and, and other folks put together documentaries on it. It's so almost like it's all it was, out there. Almost like it was a historical event or something. Hmm. Historical event. That being said, if you like what you saw, again, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. All of our social media will be linked here. Go check us out and say hey on Instagram or Facebook, as well as our website linked below. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And thank you for suggesting this case study. Ha, ha, ha.